Good afternoon, Mark Sutteth, HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for November the 1st, 2016, the hurricane season in its last month. And here is a satellite animation with the last frame blacked out over the northern part of it. That's always nice. Showing you the, hey, at least it's not my fault. Uh, strong westerly winds now cutting across the tropics. This time of year, we usually don't see much development. And where we do, it's usually over in this region. And once in a while, you'll get something developing out here in the subtropics. And um, most of the time, nothing affects land, at least the United States. There were some exceptions. Hurricane Kate in 1985. Uh, up in the Florida Panhandle area as a Category 3. And down in the Caribbean in 1999, around mid-November, wrong way Lenny, Hurricane Lenny came across the Caribbean going from west to east. Um, 2001, we had Hurricane Michelle, very powerful Category 4 in the Northwest Caribbean Sea. It moved across and then cut out over the Bahamas like that. I went down to the Keys for that storm. Uh, it didn't get close enough to really bring too many effects there and thank goodness it didn't because back then I didn't know what I know now and it would have been pretty bad had it cut across the keys but the bottom line is November is typically a pretty slow month we can see that on the chart here the peak of the season long since gone now September 10th and there's a secondary peak in October around mid-October and then we have this sort of tertiary peak, or third peak, right around this time of the hurricane season. Just a little uptick in climatology, uh, but I don't see anything out there that looks like it will develop anytime soon. So no worries. This is the uh, plot of the different development areas over the past 100 plus years. And you can see that the majority of concentration would be here in the Western Caribbean with a pretty random scattering from there out across the Atlantic and a good deal of activity like I said in the subtropics one little area in the Bay of Campeche and then the eastern Pacific still has a few areas where development has taken place but even that region is calming down cold air coming in even though you wouldn't know it this week most of the lower 48 here east of the Rockies very very warm above normal in a lot of places one of the warmest Halloweens uh, that I can remember and very warm this week uh, but it's not so much the cold air that comes down but these strong westerly winds that set in that limit development so now we start to take a look at things that will shape not only next hurricane season a little bit too early to really be worried about that but what's going to happen during the off season here the winter storm season uh, I like to pay attention to strong coastal storms uh, some of these will develop over the mid-Atlantic states and then ride up the East Coast. Some of them get their start in Texas, and they come across the northern Gulf Coast, turning the corner to make for some big nor'easters and several different tracks in between. And this will really matter because look at this. These water temperature anomalies very much above the long-term average in the northwest Atlantic. The main development region is still very warm has nothing to do with nor'easters but this is still very warm kind of cooled off around the Bahamas and the extreme southwest Atlantic uh, but boy the western Gulf still very very warm compared to normal and that will factor into next year's tornado season probably uh, so there's going to be a lot to watch in the off season and uh, I will be doing these updates once a week from here on out and if we have a big weather event that comes along I can do frequent updates as needed. So moving along here in the uh, temperature anomaly chart, notice the Pacific. Now this is pretty interesting. Overall, you got these pretty large areas of blue showing up. Southern Pacific here, the equatorial Pacific with our La Nina. And it's almost technically a La Nina. It won't be too much longer until NOAA and the Climate Prediction Center, I think, christened this officially as a weak La Nina. I mean, look at these anomalies and how much they've spread. Uh, we're not talking about just a little thin strip anymore. And then elsewhere, all this cold showing up uh, in a lot of areas of uh, at normal. Uh, basically, if we look at the chart here, right around here is your normal temperatures. And so the Pacific has cooled since last year for sure, 
while the Atlantic on the overall scale has warmed. So that'll be interesting to see if that persists through the winter. You know, we're going to get these big fronts that'll come off and deep cold air advection, and we'll probably cool off these temperatures a lot. But this will be something to watch as we get through the winter and then the spring. And really what happens here will be a big player in next year's hurricane season for the Atlantic Basin. Uh, by the way, the very first sort of look uh, from uh, a qualified individual and his team will be Dr. Phil Klotzbach. In early December, he'll give sort of an objective look at what will be happening next year with different scenarios. Uh, that comes out the 1st of December, so we can look forward to that. Uh, it's only November 1st, though. We have a while to go. Looking at the subsurface, now this is something else we can track on uh, a couple times a month. I think this gets updated. The most recent is the 25th of October. And again, this is a slice through the equatorial Pacific. And you can see this large area of blue. And this extends down to about 200 meters into the ocean. And a good deal of it well below the long-term average. And some of these, if we just look at the gradient here, you have one, two, three, four, five shades of blue. And uh, maybe that's a new book that will come out for weather weenies. Five shades of blue. Trying to be humorous. Follow along if you can. Uh, but really, that, you know, five shades of blue there. What does that mean? Well, let's see if we find that down here. One, two, three, four, five. So between four and five degrees Celsius below average. Now, that's a fairly small area. Uh, but overall, cold conditions in the subsurface of the Pacific. And so that's driving this La Nina pattern. Over here, this is kind of interesting, warming up way down below. Um, we'll see, you know, we watch the SOI, the Southern Oscillation Index. A lot of things to pay attention to in the coming weeks and months as the off-season gets here. Uh, but these are just some of the different puzzle pieces that I'll be watching. Again, nothing brewing in the tropics, no major winter storms anytime soon. We're kind of in this sort of lull pattern over North America with very warm temperatures. And it won't be until we break that and we get like a big trough developing over the east that things will start to become interesting again. And you can bet it's only a matter of time that we'll get a pretty big coastal storm along the east coast. And with those warm water temperatures, it could be quite interesting. And some of those rival low-end uh, hurricanes, 70, 80 mile an hour winds out there, in some cases higher than that. I mean, look at the perfect storm, 1991, 25 years ago. Hurricane Sandy sort of evolved into this giant hybrid extratropical hurricane mix, you know, back in 2012. So some very interesting things can happen when cold air coming off the continent and the baroclinic actions of the atmosphere, energy in the atmosphere colliding with that very warm water, and, and in this case, very warm water compared to normal of the western Atlantic. So we'll be watching all of that, all right? So that is it from me for today. Have a great rest of your start to November. Again, this will be basically once a week, either Monday or Tuesday. I'll have something on. I'm also working on a 2016 version of my Tracking the Hurricanes series. I did a 2004, 2005, and a 2008. And I haven't done anything since 2008, unfortunately. Uh, but now I have enough material, a lot of it in high definition, a lot of new stuff. Uh, that it's time. So I've been working on editing that, and I'll make that available on DVD in time for Christmas, hint, hint. And I'll also have it on YouTube as a rental. First time I'll have ever done that. That'll be pretty cool, uh, where you can rent it and watch it on YouTube or own a hard copy via DVD. I'll talk about it more as I get farther along, and hopefully I can put out a little teaser trailer for it soon as well. All right? Hey, as always, thanks for tuning in, and thanks for being a part of this hurricane season with me. Gained a lot of subscribers this uh, season compared to where I started. Tremendous amount of interaction. That's been fantastic. And um, it, we're only just getting started, even though I've done this for 21 years. The technology gets better and better each year, and we can bring you closer and closer to showing you the effects of hurricanes like you've never seen before. Sprinkle in the data from the weather instruments and the science and uh, we have one heck of a package going on here, and I appreciate you being a part of it. We've got some awesome things 
planned for 2017. All right? So that is it for me. Uh, have a great rest of your Tuesday. Mark Sedeth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll talk to you again sometime next week.